How long do we have time? Um, we need to be out here by 55. Choosing your major, it's almost as if like you're determining your life early, and that's not necessarily something that you know you have to worry too much about. You always have a choice to change, even um, you know at any point in time. So just keep that in mind. So, All right. So how many people here want to be doctors, nurses, veterinarians, medical researchers, or anything in that broad spectrum? Okay, great. And this is going to be informative for all of you. I promise. So becoming a doctor or doing anything in the medical field is a grueling journey, and it's going to beat you down, and it's going to keep you down at times, but there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. And it's up to you, and it's up to the choices that you make to make that journey a little bit easier, or at least more fun or more enjoyable. So we're going to present and tell you about one way that we have found to make it more enjoyable. Um, basically, all right, so. Um, Formula the strategy for success, and there's like tons of ways to do it, especially um, read, right? Um, read what your major entitles, what it becomes or should become, what it, it contains, and you know, because you're in the end, you're planning out your life, so you want to kind of know what's going to happen. You don't want to say, I want to be this, but then be surprised at what they throw at you. It's like, oh, I can't do this anymore, or something like that. You want to know what you're getting yourself into. And most so, of you are seniors, right? Some juniors. Juniors, okay. So most of you are probably going to study for the SATs, figure out how to apply to college and stuff. Well, the same thing applies to medical school. You really want to be prepared. Start when you're a freshman in college. Start now. Don't wait until you're a senior or a junior and be like, hmm, I think I should start studying for the MCATs now, or I think I should start looking at what prereqs I need to do. That's this is all the information out there, and you can easily find it. And it's it will really, uh, whether you're going to go like veterinary, nursing school, or medical school or something, knowing the information early will really help you out. It'll help you make the right decisions. And what it does is that it allows you to stay out in the crowd. Is that um, you you want to know you want to do everything early. At this point in time, you want to just start. Like you want to do labs early. You want to you know mess around with the MCATs early. You want to you know try and get research opportunities early. Because the earlier you do it, the the more you stand out. Because you know typical human nature, we always tend to kind of just wait on it. So, a degree um, in college of science will help you stand out. 50% uh, around there are people who apply to medical school or apply to a major. So only about 10% of them get in. About 7 to 8% of people are philosophy majors, but about 65% of them get in. So really stand out. Don't just do bio or chemistry or something because you think that will get you in there or you think it will give you knowledge or some though it will help you with your class, with your coursework in medical school or veterinarian school because it, it won't. It will. Uh, uh, unless, unless you really do like biology or chemistry, then but study something that you'll enjoy because you're going to spend four years doing it, and after that you're going to spend four more years and or three more years in medical or dental school, and there's going to be plenty of time to learn all that bio stuff that you're interested in. And so if you don't, you'll suffer epic failure. There's a lot of failure stories, especially on the Student Doctor Network, which is a great website to get information. All right. So a degree in cognitive science. Well. What exactly is it, right? So it's not exactly your top four best degree getting you, you know, triple digits or anything like that. So um, the, mo the most common way to explain it, if I explain it to my friends, is understanding the nature of the human mind. And, and how know, we interact with our own minds, with each other, with the environment. Uh, a lot of what cognitive science is uh, would take a long time to explain, so that's why uh, Tan gave you nice packets. And if we had more time, we'd go into a lot more detail about right. it. But the circle right here kind of encompasses what cognitive science is. It brings all, all these uh, subjects into you know, just understanding you know, how the mind works. It's very interdisciplinary in nature, and it draws from a lot of different departments. So um, for this department especially is that um, we have a unique five specialization system. So um, the bio-related ones are the ones pointed in arrows right there. So um, clinical aspects, human cognition, and neuroscience. And um, the the Clinical aspects is focused a little more on physiology, the cognition is more on human psychology, and then neuroscience is, well, yeah, neuroscience. And you can still go into any medical route doing any of these, it's just that neuroscience is going to allow you to take biochemistry to fulfill elective requirements, which you need for med school. But if you're really interested in artificial intelligence and computation, you can do a computation major or a human computer interaction and still uh, have enough time to fulfill your pre 
contract requirements or your pre vet or pre dental requirements? Yeah, so um, I'm human computer interaction and he is um, neuroscience. So we kind of have like, both sides of the field. But for me, I kind of like to, you know, I like pictures that invoke emotion and, uh, you know, makes you kind of want coffee or chocolate in this case, right? So um, good pictures like these are always nice. Um, this pool has been making me want to go to I think. Um, so, um, yeah, Tom is actually got some granola bars right now. Hopefully, you enjoy a little more. So, um, yeah. All right, so what's the difference? I mean, why why content plan? Why not bio, right? Because that's what you've been told. It's like, just do bio, let's do bio. And then you get another option. It's like, what is this option? What's the big difference? So, at UCSD, this is the requirements you fulfill for a degree in uh, biology. It's I mean, there's different delineations between the coursework, but this is the amount of classes you'd have to take. Uh, this is the bulk of your pre-med requirements and uh, chemistry and OCHEM. Uh, if you did a degree in cognitive science, you have all this extra room which can be, which can be used for those pre-med requirements that I showed before. And then uh, if you're doing neuroscience or clinical or one of the bio-related uh, specializations in college side, you can do O chemistry as an elective credit. And all this stuff in your folder explains that a lot better. And you know, as we do, we're doing lab work after this. You guys can ask us a lot more questions in, in depth and in detail as we walk and stuff. Right. So the uh, question is now is, well, I mean, I'm not, I'm doing less coursework, but will I obtain the necessary skills that allow me to stand out? Right. Because Absolutely. Less skills. You know. So, fair enough. First of all, um, remember the nation for neuroscience and neurobiology. So that's one thing. And we're also first in the world for developing a cognitive science department of this type of caliber. So someone like this is you know, maybe an incentive to go. And uh, I mean, if you did the biology degree, you could work in a lot of labs, and you definitely get a lot of that bio, and you can do a lot of health-related lab and, and uh, coursework, and really get a feel for the academic research involved in neuroscience and biology. But with a specialization in neuroscience through cognitive science, a lot of our labs on in our uh, cog side building here uh, work with those still like really dense bio-related and chemistry-related applications. Uh, Professor Nitz's lab, who you're gonna visit, uh, works with neuroscience and studies behavior in rats using local field potentials, and he does neurosurgery on the rats and puts little electrodes in their brain, uh, little wires that will find where the, when the neurons are firing. Dr. Pineda, uh, Pineda's lab, who you're gonna visit too, uses EEG skull caps, and uh, really works, work, does a lot of work with autistic children. So yeah, there are a lot of labs and a lot of opportunities, and there's a lot of labs in the medical school with Professor Jernigan, and a lot of labs in the neuroscience area where you can still work, and you can use college science like a gateway to get into there. Right, so I guess we'll end it for now. Um, he is Kyle, this and my is name Alan. is Alan, and we're part of uh, PIX, or People in Funding Cognitive Science Community Service. Um, person in the back right there is the lovely Todd Maxwell. She's your best friend in the Cogside department. Right, and then uh, some websites down. I'm pretty sure they're already in your packet. So, um, any questions you can ask us along the way? Yeah, we're, we're cool. Time, so. Can I ask? Um, I'm not sure that kids, I don't know if you guys knew this when you were in high school, but everyone, I think, kind of comes in to college thinking they have to be a bio major to get to med school. They don't realize that people, that there are things you have to fulfill and you have to do well on. Your they don't realize that a lot of people come in other majors and backgrounds. So. And if you're a bio major, you're more likely not to get into med school than other related majors because of the pure, just because of the sheer amount of applicants. And there's a lot of people who go into biology, and the people who are bio majors that get into med school are extremely hardworking and extremely smart. Not to say that you aren't, but they're when applicate when admission officers look at the bio applicants, they're going to have a distribution of extremely talented and good students have a huge. Resin, or have a huge resume and application, scored really well in the MCAS, straight A's and stuff, and there's going to be on the plus side of that. So they're going to naturally choose the bio majors who are well suited, but if you're a philosophy major or an engineering major or something, you bring a whole new set of skills to the table. Skills that you can't get from maybe a bio major. Maybe you can, but you're going to have these, all the bio that you're going to learn in undergrad that you think you use in med school, they're going to be teaching in med school. So they don't care if you took physiology, you know, um, although I do recommend you take biochemistry and physiology because it will help you immensely on the MCAS, but they're not going to care if you have all these upper division, bio, and uh, chem classes because they're going to teach you what you need to know when you're in there. Uh, and it's more about having fun while you're undergrad doing something that you love. Because if you do something that you love, you're going to do well in it. And if you 
you will and then that's going to show in your application you're going to get into med school because they're going to see that they're going to see that you have a passion for something and you're able to express it and do it yeah. all right um, so how are you guys want to split up into two groups we're going to go into two lab tours so split it down the middle yeah. do it that way okay.